This here is a so-called triac dimmer, or sometimes it's called an AC dimmer circuit. You see, a few weeks ago I've made a video about the universal motors and show you how they work internally and how to connect them, but I've also shown you a crude circuit for controlling AC power and how to control the speed of that AC motor. That circuit is called an AC dimmer and is made with a component that is called a triac. Today I want to explain you how an AC dimmer works, how a triac works and why it's such an important component and show you a few AC dimmer circuits and test them out with motors, AC light bulbs and other AC devices. This video can be quite interesting, so guys, let's get started. Get PCBs like these ones using the services of PCBWay with amazing quality and incredible prices. Just upload your Gerber files to their website PCBWay.com. And have in mind you can select between several colors. Gold plated pads for better conductivity, different thicknesses and amount of layers up to 14 layers. I'm always satisfied with my orders and the excellent quality. And the order process takes only a few minutes and in just a few days I received my PCBs well packed. Now my projects are more professional and work a lot better, with less errors. Excellent tracks and good precision for the pads, the vias and the surface finish. So improve your projects by ordering your PCBs with PCBWay, starting from only $5. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is a triac and we use this component with AC high voltage. AC stands for alternating current, so you have to understand that this voltage, as you can see on my oscilloscope, has both positive and negative values. So it's not that easy to dim the power of this kind of voltage as we do with DC for example, using PWM signals from the Arduino. On top of that, today we are working with high voltage from the main outlet, so make sure that to stay safe, use proper tools and never touch the exposed wires. To understand how the circuit works, let's first see how the triac works. This is AC voltage, which passes through negative and positive values. The triac would allow the current to pass in both ways, but with one condition. When the voltage changes polarity, it will stop the current flow. To activate again the current flow, we need to apply a short pulse at the triac gate. But once again, it will only allow the current to flow till the voltage changes the polarity once again. So think it like this. This is the input AC voltage, and this is the output of the triac, which for now is zero because the triac is not activated yet. I apply a short pulse at the triac gate when the AC input is at 90 degrees for example. So now the triac is active so the output will be like this, with the positive side of the AC voltage. But when the input voltage passes from positive to negative, the triac will stop allowing the current to pass. So the output is zero once again. But when the AC input voltage is at 270 degrees for example, I apply another pulse at the triac gate. So now the output will also have the other part of the negative AC voltage. So as you can see, the input is 100% of the power, but the output is only 50% of the power, because we have removed the other half of the wave. So I think it's quite obvious that by applying the firing pulse at the triac gate at the beginning of the sinusoidal wave, we allow more power to pass. And if I apply the pulse almost at the end of the wave, we allow less power to pass. So that's how we can dim the AC power, just by changing the firing time of the pulse at the triac gate. We've seen more about this topic in the Bluetooth triac controller, where we read the zero cross with the Arduino and create the firing pulse at the triac gate to control the power using Bluetooth data from a smartphone. But this time the circuit is fully analog. It has no microcontroller or digital component, only passive components. Let's start with a very easy circuit, which is this one here. 
we have the triac, another component that is called a diac, and some resistors and capacitors. To change the firing pulse time, we use the potentiometer, and that's how we can change the output power. This module is using this exact circuit. I connect it to 220 volts from the main outlet, and the output is connected to my AC motor. I also connect the output to the oscilloscope to see the results. I power on the circuit and start moving the potentiometer. And as you can see, the more I rotate the potentiometer, the bigger or smaller the AC part of the wave gets, so more or less power is applied to the motor. But if we have no microcontroller, what is applying the pulses at the tri gate with this simple circuit? Well, let's analyze it. The diac component here allows the current to flow in both directions, but only when a certain threshold voltage is reached. So we start with everything powered off, and we apply the AC voltage at the input. Since the track is off, the output is still zero. But we have a small current flow through here, and this capacitor is charging up. When the value of the capacitor reaches the threshold value of the diac, this will allow the current to flow towards the gate of the triac, and that's what activates it. So now the output is like this, till the AC voltage changes polarity, and the triac is off again. But now that small capacitor is charging up with negative polarity. And again, when the capacitor reaches a certain threshold value, the diac will allow the current flow once again and activate the tri gate again. So as you can see, just by charging up the small capacitor, we can create those firing pulses at the tri gate. The capacitor charging speed is affected by this resistor value. The higher the resistor value gets, the slower the charging process will be, so the firing pulse will be applied later, so the output power will be lower. That's why we use a potentiometer, so we could regulate this resistance value, making the charging process faster or slower, and with that, we change the firing pulse position, so we change the output power. Quite easy, right? So that's how this AC dimmer works. And here I have another model, which works kind of the same, but it also uses a small full bridge rectifier. I've managed to reverse engineer the PCB, and this is the schematic. Kind of the same, right? Have in mind that for a lot of power, the track will get hot, due to power losses. That's why all the AC dimmers will have some sort of heat sink to dissipate that heat. The BT824 for example, could work with up to 800 volts and 25 amps, and that's a lot of power. But make sure to check the datasheet of each component before you make such a circuit. Also have in mind that the value of the capacitor and the value of the potentiometer will change the firing time. The bigger the capacitor, the slower the charging process will be. And the same for the resistor. Usually we also add a fuse in order to control the maximum power. This circuit for example has a 20 amps fuse as well. Also as you can see on the PCB, the used resistors are SMD, but they are very big, it's a 2512 package, so they could withstand more power. The used capacitor must be rated for high voltage, and also to be non-polarized, so make sure that you don't use capacitors like this one here. Since we are working with high voltage that could really injure you, please be safe, and if you don't know what you are doing, it's better not to try this project. But I've got myself a triac, a 500k potentiometer, and some resistors and capacitors. And also the diac, which is this component here that looks like a diode. I get a piece of my own design of a prototyping PCB, and made a circuit that you could find on electrons.com. So we solder all the components. I connect it to 220 volts and test it. And it works very well, as you can see. Mm -hmm. 
I also connect the oscilloscope and we can see how the firing angle changes. But for higher loads you should also add a heat sink, otherwise it might burn out. So guys check electrodes.com for this schematic and more explanation. I hope that you now know how the analog AC track dimmer works. It's quite easy, right? I hope that you have learned something new, and if so give me a like or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey, so one more video that ends, I hope that you like it. Ok, so listen, if you want to buy my merch, my t-shirts, you have the links below for my shop, and I promise that I will make more designs. And also maybe you would comment below which one you like more and what more designs you would like to see, because in that way I could start designing them and post my new t-shirts. So thank you for all the support and I'll see you in the next video.